And we're live. Welcome, everybody, here to the Lakers Lounge podcast. I'm Anthony Irwin of LakersDaily.com. I am joined today by somebody who it has taken way too long to get on the show, somebody who I'm actually helping, like, professionally with, with, with her show, The Heat Check. She also does the Bet MGM Tonight Show. This is Trista Crick. Uh, you can find her on Twitter, at Trista underscore Crick. She is really knowledgeable of basketball, sports in general, and specifically sports gambling. And, um, you know, given this Jonte Porter situation, I thought, no, couldn't think of anybody better to bring on here to talk about this. So Trista, um, just a fair warning as we, as we head into this, I have no idea like the depths to which we are going to get into this. So you're going to guide us through this basically, you know, by answering some of these questions. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm happy to be on. I love what you're doing. I, I told you before we went on, I love your graphics package. I love the, the amount of content that you put out. Don't love the content, considering that I've been a Laker hater for 31 <laughs> out of 30, nah, 37 out of 38 years. We'll just call it like as soon as I had cognition, um, my yeah. mom taught me. My mom used to circle the calendar for every Laker game, and she'd, <laughs> she'd write her own like, grr, you know. Oh, Beat nice. LA on the TV <laughs> guide calendars and stuff. So um, purple and gold has always been the uh, the arch nemesis. Well, according to some of the people who watch and, and listen and follow to, and follow me on Twitter, I'm also a hater. So, like, actually, I think it works out. Um, but you're originally from Portland, right? Like, yep. you, Blazers fan, and and I can understand that. I can understand why Blazers fans like really, really hate the Lakers. We've we've ruined a lot of your days growing up. Oh, I mean, that probably we probably win a championship if it wasn't that you know we're up 15 fourth quarter. Kobe, Shaq, height of the Blazers. Kings Kings fans probably feel the same way because it was right around the same era. I think it was like a year in between. But man, it felt like I remember exactly where I was. The first time I went to Staples Center, that that like Shaq photo yeah. is right mm -hmm. when you walk into the tunnel. And I'm like, that's that's PTSD right there. That's triggering, <laughs> you know? It would be funny if they alternated photos based on which fan base was walking in. Like if they actually own their arena, if Jeannie bus was smart enough, a business person to own her arena, you could just have like a rotating thing. So like Kings fans could be, could see Robert Ori on the follow through, you know, <laughs> you guys could see that Shaq picture there as well. Boston fans can just see any person who isn't white. It'd be great. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, let's, let's, let's dive on into this thing though. John T. Porter, this was surreal for me. Like, as, as we found out about this, um, Shohei Otani is, is giving his press conference. And he's talking about, like, adamant. I did not place any bets. This was all my translator. This was all that person. I thought it was a super awkward spot for his new translator translator to be. Just like, I, I swear, I'm not saying this. This is what this guy is saying about that guy. <laughs> um, but as all that is going on, you get the Woj notification that John T. Porter is now being held out of the lineup for the Toronto Raptors as the league and I guess sports books look into some funky trading or funky uh, betting that has gone on regarding his prop bets. And one of the reported details that really stuck out to me, because I was like, well, how do you find this? You know, like he you always think like it's it's like the movies where some guy just like never makes any shots or some guy is just like throwing the ball out of bounds for no reason whatsoever if they're throwing a game. Um, but like, you know, you, you come to find out that it's a prop bet thing, right? So you want to explain that? We could start there. Yeah, so for people who don't bet, a prop bet is a statistic. Uh, you can bet on statistical categories on players for every sport. And you can yeah. pretty much bet everything that can happen individually for a player in a game. You can bet steals. You can bet blocks. You can bet combination of stock, steals and blocks, as we call them, stock, stock, stocks. You can yeah. bet points, rebounds, assists. You can bet those in any iteration that you want, PRA, PR, RA, PA. And so each one of those little prop bets is, is a bet that you can place money on. 
and you can mm-hmm. bet the over or the under. And they'll usually, sports books will usually, first and foremost, not create props for players as obscure as John Tay Porter. The first yeah. thing that I thought yeah. of when I saw this was, how like how often have we even seen John Tay Porter props available? Because I yeah. remember when Ben Matherin first got to the league, Ben Matherin was coming off the bench as a six man. He's getting 25, 30 minutes a game. And it took, I don't know, 60 games or something before sportsbooks even offered Ben Matherin props. So Toronto has this streak of injuries that happen. And so John Tay Porter ends up finding his way from being a G League guy to getting into the lineup as a starter. So that's number one. So he's, I don't know how often he had prop bets even available, but we, what we know is that the league identified and sports books identified that on at least two separate occasions, John Tay Porter was, was getting heavy handle, meaning lots of money was flowing in on him against him, not for him. Almost no money was being bet uh, for him. And well, nobody in their right mind would bet for John Tay Porter. <laughs> no shot. No yeah. shot. We don't know how how many minutes he's going to get. He's getting about 14 minutes per game. He's played in 26 games. He's averaging like seven points, four assists, uh, or four rebounds, maybe two assists, something like that. And usually sports yeah. books, when they offer props, just simply take the average of your statistical categories, and then they offer that. Mm-hmm. So that's why sports books typically only allow you to bet at maximum one or two thousand dollars on a prop bet because it's yeah. too risky for the book to allow maximum bets to go out on on any player, even Jalen Brunson, LeBron James, anybody. You can't just say, "Oh, I want to bet LeBron James to score thirty-five. I'll put a hundred thousand dollars down." That just will not happen. Sports books will not allow it. But they track everything that you even attempt to do on the on the app. Yeah. So if you tried to place a bet on John Tay Porter under three rebounds at $15,000 or $20,000, even though it will not allow you, it raises an immediate red flag. Like why is anyone trying to place a huge bet that they know if they're a season better, they would know they cannot place that, that amount on them. So they know that this is a non season better betting on an obscure player. And then you add that into the fact that not just John Tay Porter doesn't play well, he plays the full game. No, Jonte Porter takes himself out of the game four minutes in due yeah. to re-injuring an, an eye injury, and there's no film or tape of him getting hit in the face. So that's like part one. Then it happens again on March 20th due to him feeling ill for three minutes into the game. Same thing. But the craziest thing is that the sports books all call one another, and they all got completely – hammered they got comp- that was the number one most profitable bet yeah. in in that night's betting so we're talking about in the nights where there's lebron there's ad there's all these stars luca where you want to bet on stars like those are the yeah. ones that normally have the highest volume of bets and it wasn't them it was john Tay porter yeah. now being the largest profitable bet for betters I mean, the only outcome that's possible is that John Tay Porter was a part of this. Yeah, I, like what it sounds to me like, because a, a phrase that you use there, I think that's an important one to to note, is a seasoned better would know that they would not be able to do this. Somebody who maybe, and, and look, this is completely hypothetical. This is completely an allegation. I'm not going to get myself into trouble here. But it seems to me like one of the likelier scenarios here is <clears throat> this guy telling somebody that they are close with, hey, this is a quick way to make a, a few bucks, seems like. Uh, we do know that he's like way into crypto and he, and he talks about uh, the, you know, some of the, the, the corners that he has cut in order to be super profitable in uh, crypto. So we know that he's interested in a quick buck, hasn't made a ton of money in his career, will not likely make, well, well certainly at this point, will not likely make a ton of money in his NBA career. So he's kind of looking at this like, all right, well, if I just notify a friend or something like that, or, hey, I feel I might get a tummy ache in this game. 
And, and if you bet this much on my unders or whatever, those are going to hit. And uh, you mentioned like you were even talking about the most profitable bet. That's probably because only like three bets were made on John Tay Porter and they all won. Like, <laughs> no, no, most profitable bet of any bet that day. Yeah. So you have to stack it up. So say, so say that the maximum bet size that you can place on any prop bet is a thousand dollars, right? Yeah. How many bets on John Tay Porter had to have been placed in order for that bet to be the most profitable bet, not just in terms of like 100% winning percentage, you're talking yeah. about number of dollars. So when we have guys like LeBron James, where there's, you'll look at DraftKings. I know you're not in a legal betting state, but if you look in a legal betting state on any given day, we can just go right now and see, right? And you can go to DraftKings or any book, DraftKings shows you how many people are betting something. So like, for example, if you want to take a prop bet on, let's see, on, uh, let's just look on points, right? And you want to say, all right, like, I want to bet on Luca tonight. He's a featured player. His, his bet for points is 32 and a half. And okay. like, you can, you can say, okay, it's, it's, I'm going to take over Luca points, 32 and a half. And then when you place that, there's a way to see like 17,000 people right now have bet yeah. on Luca overs mm -hmm. case. And, and Luca's hitting those bets. And that's not the most profitable bet of the night. It's John Tay Porter. How many thousand had to be placing bets on different sports books? on different statistical categories. The the under three pointers for John Tay Porter was the, the most profitable bet on the board out of, I told you, every statistical category That's is available for every NBA game and, and every game in every sport. So if yeah. that's the number one bet on the board, there's thousands of these bets coming in. And you could probably say if it was me and I live in a bet legal betting zone, which I do in Virginia, right? There's like 15 different bets that are 15 yeah. different sports books that you can bet on. There's DraftKings, FanDuel, BetMGM, there's Caesars, there's Bet 365. The list goes on and on. So say yeah. you want to put $10,000 in each one of these accounts. I don't know how they're getting the money, but whatever. And you're betting, okay, I'm going to bet $1,000 on Jonte Porter under points. I'm going to bet $1,000 on Jonte Porter under assists, $1,000 on Jonte Porter under rebounds, $1,000 on Jonte Porter under three-pointers. Then $1,000 on under points and assists, $1,000 under points, rebounds, and assists, $1,000 under rebounds and points. So now you're talking about that for every book in, in your legal betting state. So that's yeah. potentially $35,000 just in five books alone for one person. That's So now you've it, got, if that's the most profitable bet, I venture there's like 50 people maybe at least that are taking these bets. In order for it to be the most profitable thing that they had for vetters, there's the, the volume of people that had to have taken that bet is massive. Apparently he has this discord and, and yeah, I guess the, the, the internet detectives are, are going through it to try to find what they can find there. Um, when Woj dropped this report, apparently an NBA spokesperson <clears throat> said that they are looking into it. That was the extent of their, um, response. You called this, uh, the, the biggest betting scandal to hit the NBA, right? Um, why did, why, why, why are you, uh, going to that extent with it? Because you're talking about the foundation of what the NBA can't have, right? So we've never had, we've had Donahue, a, a referee, fix games or shave points, right? You've got that scenario taking place. That's a referee. We yeah. have now someone who's the asset of the game manipulating the outcome of his own individual performance. And now we've got, we've got proof that this happened because sports betting is now legal. Before, sports betting wasn't legalized, so it had to happen on illegal books. 
So it's hard, really hard to track. Now yeah. what you see with these legal sports books is they track everything and they communicate between one another. So we've never seen leagues, anything. Because they are now partnered. Right. And the leagues. So the and and before when Tim Donahue in this scandal occurred, one, he was obviously banned and they tried to cover it up. But two, the leagues were not in bed with sports books. The leagues, because they want to continue to increase the salary cap, right? Yep. Let's call it what it is. The, the leagues need sports betting to prop up we all their do. right deals, right? Our we whole all industry it. right now is 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 based them. like almost solely on betting money. If betting money didn't occur, like you would have 20% as many people in the content space because as time goes on, these these networks are getting squeezed by leagues, right? And are forced to pay more and more and more to cover those games. And eventually, without advertising dollars making that worthwhile, ESPN, Fox, all these different places, even the online communities, couldn't hire these people and couldn't spend billions of dollars to broadcast these games. The only reason that the advertising makes sense and the math is mathing is because sports books say, okay, we'll pay you hundreds of millions of dollars for Chuck, Charles Barkley, and Kenny to like give you out. Can I cuss on this? Yeah. I can't yeah. give you out a bullshit parlay that they don't know shit about. They know nothing. No, yeah. They're like, oh, Luca, he's going to have a bad rebounding night. We'll go under eight rebounds for Luca. We'll go over four threes, three and a half threes for Tatum. They're so intertwined because that's the only way that these channels in the age of cord cutting can even exist yeah yeah the the that was kind of funny to me while the shohei otani thing was going on and everybody was kind of like clutching their pearls over his press conference there was the 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 lines the line tracker underneath his video yeah. <laughs> it was like it was like how dare you shohei did you or did you not bet on this and like all that was missing is somebody asking underneath it, like, did Shohei lie? Is Shohei lying right now? Plus 150. <laughs> is he lying right now? Like, like that's all that was missing from that, that entire, like, ridiculous situation that was going on right it's now. Like, because- it's like Shohei Otani live from <laughs> Dodger Stadium. Also, you can get Shohei Otani RBI at 150 RBI. Yeah. But you can get... 37 home runs over <laughs> under on Shohei Otani. Yeah, it was such a perfect situation for Shohei because the Angels were such shit. He could personally get whatever numbers that he needed to, and he knew that his team was also going to lose. So, like, Ipe, like was in a great spot to keep on betting. He just kept on, like, walking through the hallways of Angels Stadium, listening to Audie Moreno say all kinds of dumb stuff. He's like, okay, well, we're just going to keep betting against these guys. And they probably did pretty well. But well, he bet he, he bet on other games too and other sports. There was some yeah. baseball being bet on, but yeah, you're right. There's there's chatter. This hasn't really been discussed, but there's chatter that there was like a two or three week span where Shohei Otani went through a very uncharacteristic slump. And his numbers were, you know, 30, 40% worse than normal in terms of his strikeout, yeah. uh, in terms of his batting percentage. There's a lot you could, as a player, there's a lot you can do if you want to try to manipulate your perform, your individual performance. That's what's so difficult is in, in the age of, you know, Donahue and Jordan and all of that, player props weren't really a thing like they are now. There's outcomes of yeah. games. Very hard, very hard to manipulate games in terms of, like, against the spread. You have to be great. Like yes. You- Win loss and football's even harder, right? Like it's a total yeah, it's team tremendous. sport. But with an individual player prop, you're talking about like stacks, right? You can just be like, "Well, I'm just not going to get a sack today. I'm just not going to yeah. get one. I'm just going to just lay off or I'm going to let somebody else get a sack um instead of me." So the player prop aspect makes it a lot easier to manipulate the game. But you you have to say, like, ultimately, the real issue, I'm trying to get my charger here. The real issue is the integrity of the game. And yeah. what, you, what you can't have as a league 
is anyone question. We already have all this stuff about the script, right? When you have players, even role players that are as irrelevant as John Tay Porter is, manipulating the game in any way, and leagues need sports betting dollars to function, now you've got real problems. Now you've got a lot of issues with networks that may not want to carry the NBA. The NBA needs Apple, Amazon, NBC to be in a bidding war to continue to keep salaries high, to continue to grow the league. As you were talking about Shohei, you know, it I thought was the perfect point to make about that, you know, the 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 legitimacy of what we're watching, right? And um, you know, it it, it was always bound to happen. Slumps happen in baseball. You know, hitting a baseball is is one of the most random things that you can do in sports. You're talking about fractions of milliliters deciding between whether that's a pot fly or a homer, right? And um, and yet, and 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 you know, even players as great as Shohei are always going to go through their slumps or whatever. But now, because of what's going on with his translator, people are always gonna now we're gonna start looking at well. Is that real? Like, was that an actual? And and that's what baseball can't have. And I think to your point about um, Jante, uh, you know, the NBA cannot have this. They they're, they are going to throw the book at him. You know that like they are. Uh, they say that they're going through their um, investigation or whatever, and it's actually really easy for them to throw the book at Jante. Like, if any, I'm not saying that Adam Silver would be rooting for this. But if this was going to happen, he was probably hoping it would be a Jonte Porter because it's really easy to just blackball that guy out of the league and just say, well, he just he was barely in it before and now he's just kind of out. Um, where do you think this goes? Like, how, is there any way that the league can like once this is out there and once we find out because like, I don't think I, I don't think this is an isolated incident like with the player prop bets, there is just so much money to be gained given how much money is going in and out of these sports books and stuff. Now that that ugly truth is kind of out there, is there, is there any way to get that cat back into the bag this time? Well, it's interesting. I think another thing that hasn't been mentioned is that he's Michael Porter Jr.'s brother. And mm -hmm. Michael Porter Jr. also has some unique things that he said in the media that leads me to believe that he's not like the most logically sound dude either. Yeah, and he's not very smart. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna in investigate and interview Michael Porter Jr. as well. They're gonna definitely do that. They're gonna monitor and discuss like with every Toronto Raptor teammate. Has he discussed any of this with you? Did did you find it weird that he wasn't on the injury report with an eye injury? And it was not like eye injury available. It was he's not on the injury report, and now he's left four minutes into the game. It's not that he was yeah. on the injury report and left with an illness. So that's very odd. So they're going to do their investigation with that. They're obviously going to be looking at cell phone records. They're going to be tying those accounts to him, trying to find connections with him in any way. So that part's interesting. The, I do think they'll ban him for life for sure. He'll probably go to jail. Like he's gonna yeah. probably if, if this happens. I mean, you're talking about like a because Brian Windhorst said this. Like, there's no evidence that Jonte Porter himself bet on games. That, I don't. I don't like. That's not really relevant because you, don't have to. you can. You, can you don't still have to. Benefit. You can be a part of a conspiracy and go down. That's how the RICO act got started. Right? Is yeah. you can go down for murder as a mob boss, ordering the the hit of someone, and not ever pull the trigger, or even be around it, or even see it, or know where it took place, and still go down. Like being yeah. the 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 center point or the eye of the storm of a conspiracy, you can still you can still absolutely be culpable. So yeah. I think also what's fascinating is the way that it's the the cat is out of the bag, but I think. It's way harder to monitor star players and what they're going to do, like Shohei Otani, mm -hmm. than, than it is John Tay Porter, right? Like John Tay Porter yeah. did this in the dumbest way possible. To remove yourself from a game is automatically going to get you just put on the radar. Yeah. But if you play full, like John Tay, go over one time. Like if you go over did. one time, you're, you're like, you're not. No, he did. He had oh, like really? 
He had 14 points uh, one night. It doesn't matter. Like, if you have an irregularity. I mean, like, miss a bet one time is what I should have yeah, said. Like, yeah. If, if he – because he, he did go over on his props. Like, he, he had. But there wasn't – there, there wasn't a conspiracy of people going under and getting and taking a bath because there's nobody taking overs on him. There's only people taking unders, and those unders only coincide with the occurrences where he's taking himself out of the games. There's nobody taking unders on other yeah. spots. It's not like he's a normally bet player, but a guy like Luca, a guy like Jalen Brunson, a guy like LeBron, a guy who's – in bed with DraftKings, like the fact that the league right now is allowing NBA players to partner with sports books like LeBron James. LeBron James is giving out NFL picks this this yeah. week uh, this year in the NFL and in college football. So things are like that relationship is really murky. But it would be very easy when guys are averaging thirty five points. To not get 35 points, because that's where they set the line. Luca scoring 30 tonight is not abnormal. Yeah. That's where it that's that's the part where it's gonna be extremely difficult to litigate, considering that he's one of the most bet players, period. Now it'll probably sort of sort itself out because there's a lot of people who would not be involved in something like that. They're gonna bet his on overs all the time. Like most star players, you're only betting their overs. Betting yeah. unders is extremely rare, extremely rare, even for role players. Most people look to bet overs in points total scored and in uh, these statistical categories because it feels good. No one wants to root against someone. Yeah. So that's something that a lot of people who don't bet don't understand either. Yeah. I, I like listening to you talk about these relationships. I'm still old enough to remember when leagues wouldn't even have teams in Vegas because they didn't want to be even like peripherally associated with gambling. And now, you know, all of these relationships are so muddled and there is so much money on the line that I don't, I don't know how some of these broadcast partners can cover this either, you know, without the conflicts of interest being brought up there because, um, you know, ESPN has a huge stake in, in all of these leagues and, and, maintaining the image of of legitimacy uh, you know and, and, and what fans are watching there we saw how ESPN covered CTE way back in the day and 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 how the NFL kind of like really kind of guided some of that coverage there as well so all of this stuff is like the conflicts the more that you kind of think about it the more that you kind of wonder about it um you know the the, the more that those conflicts seem to appear I don't know where this goes. Like my buddy, Matt, who works for um, Matt Moore, who works for the a action network and I were texting yesterday and he was like, stop whining about it. If you aren't going to offer up a solution, it's like, I don't think there is a solution. I think this, like you can't, you can't put toothpaste back into the tube. There is so much money now, so much gambling money spread around, whether it's the sports themselves or those covering it, that this is just kind of going to be part of the deal here. You just got to hope that, when you make your bets that it's not affecting you. Well, and I think the thing, this is going to be an extreme rarity, right? Like, cause this is obviously something that sports books can track quite fast. Yeah. Right. There's this big conspiracy that happened where there's a, <clears throat> there was a gambling syndicate that decided to go around and find a way to fix soccer matches in obscure leagues all over Europe. So they chose like one game in the French league and then one game in like the Adriatic yeah. league. So it felt very like impossible to bet, like impo impossible to track, excuse me. But the sports books are geniuses. They've got guys smarter than you yep. focusing on these things. And if you take not a high bar, not, a high, not, a high bar, not you specifically, but like <laughs> all of yeah. the collective people who are betting and they're like, we just lost. The, the largest amount we've ever lost on a soccer match in this random yeah. league. And then they look and see, like, in the Dutch league, we've also lost the largest amount that we've ever lost. And then you start tracking who these betters are, and then you start being able to connect the dots, right? They track – they know everything about you, yeah. where you place bets, how long you've been on the app for. So I think that this is like less of a problem for the everyday sports betting consumer than the media wants it to be like. And I, I do also think that 
different than CTE and and ESPN or all these different other networks that covered CTE in in like the softest way possible. Sports books and and the leagues and the network should all be aligned. We want the game to be as legitimate yeah. as possible. Sports books don't want to lose money based on somebody throwing a game or throwing their player props. Nor yeah. do league or nor, nor, nor do networks, right? Mm-hmm. We want people to be excited about betting. We want them to feel comfortable betting. And we want them to understand that this is just a way to enhance the viewing experience. This is not a way to think about, you know, making an income. You can't think that. Otherwise, you're cooked. Um, so the the solution is just more tracking. Uh, and I think it will eventually sort itself out. But I think players need to understand there's I don't I don't think there's a way you can get away with it long term um, yeah. without going to jail and being kicked out of the league. And when you're a star player, there's absolutely zero incentive to do it because you're making hundreds of millions of dollars off the back of sports books. Anyway, you might as yeah. well just partner with a sports book like LeBron is and you're going to make significantly more money than, you know, taking yourself out of a game four minutes into it. Yep. Um, well, this is this is a, a, a fascinating one. Honestly, it's a funny one. Like it was very on brand for a porter to get caught this way. Like if you if you follow that porter family at all, <laughs> like this was this was the most ham handed way that you could possibly do it. Um, Matt did want to make the point, kind of um, you know, without being on the show, that like in this case, the 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 situation was caught right. So yeah, for all of the hand wringing. You know, the, 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 this was caught. This didn't yes. like slip through the cracks or anything like that. So, like, and maybe it winds up being a net positive. To your point, too, if there's a lot of people who think the fact that sports betting is legal is a bad thing. And to that end, I would say if, if there were just illegal books, like your ones that you log into offshore, there's yeah. no way to track it because they don't look at social security number. You're just a random you're just a random number ID username. number in terms of your bets. Yeah. You're just a username. Mm-hmm. There's no way to connect you to anything. There's no way to connect the books, the legal books together. They're just mom and pop shops essentially. So the fact that this is legalized is the, I think the best way to keep the integrity of the game. Otherwise you wouldn't have any clue that this was going on. Yeah. I think the only thing that I, start to feel a little queasy about is the amount of advertising that goes into it during the games. You know, you, we have an entire, like, cause it it always existed. You know, I remember I, I will always remember um, my dad was never a better, he's the cheapest person that you'll ever meet. But I remember we had, um, we actually hosted the Mike Tyson fight when, when he bit Holyfield's ear and um, we had uh, a neighbor who had like a thousand bucks on one of the two fighters. I was really young when this happened. And um, so like the conversation was always there. I was always kind of around it. Um, And now though, like the, you know, the amount of advertising on it feels a little like cigarettes did at some point, you know, where, where, you know, I think younger people are a little too young to be exposed to it to that extent. But, but also like, I like my paychecks, so I'm not going to complain too much about it. Um, yeah. but no, I, I, I think, I think, you know, in, in the end, because of how ham and ham handed this was, I do think there's probably going to be some more transparency on the parts of, of like, what can players do? What are they allowed to bet? What are their like friends and family allowed to bet and all of those things. And, and, um, and we'll see where, where that takes us. But, uh, Trista, th- thank you very much for hopping on. I'm going to give you a couple minutes here. Well, I do have a a super comment that I have to get to, which means I get to play this. If I find it, there we go. Um, yeah. All right. The comment is from Brandon Omang about Gabe Vincent. Uh, Gabe might come back on the six game road trip. I don't know if that's a good thing considering this coach and his love for guards. The team is best playing big. I'm still skeptical uh, that Gabe is going to come back. I, I I'd still am told that it's pretty unlikely for that reason. There's just no minutes for him. Um, all right. Uh, but yeah, I want to get out of your way, Trista. Plug the heat check, plug, plug uh, Bet MGM tonight. Tell everybody where we could find your stuff. Pretty much almost every day, the heat check comes out on wherever you get your podcast. Anthony actually is the producer of that podcast. We send subtle little digs to the Lakers and Anthony pretty much every episode as much as we them. can. 
he delete he deletes them. I didn't know that. So, <laughs> so you you won't you won't hear them. Yeah, uh, it's we, actually a really pro Laker show now. It's, it's, really it's actually nice. like he's actually moved my words around. You can find that it's basically a, a a comedy podcast about the league and what's happening around the league, and I kind of give my perspective on what things mean in addition to, to the news that comes out. That's my that's my favorite thing that I do. What pays the bills Monday through Friday is sports betting content. So. Bet MGM tonight, 7 to 11 Eastern, four hours every night, Monday through Friday, live on the radio, live on the Odyssey app, also on Twitch, also on YouTube live, on twitch.com slash betql. I also make videos about the NBA on Instagram and on TikTok. You can find those on Instagram at uh, Trista underscore Crick and at this heat check on TikTok either medium that you love. Um, both the videos are identically going to be there. It's just for different audiences, but um, follow me, subscribe to the pod, uh, follow Anthony uh, and his journey of slowly, but surely taking out all my negative Laker comments out of the pod. <laughs> it's it, it. AI is a wonderful tool. Like you hired AI, you hired an AI and I went out and got an AI to, to swap up your words a little bit and, now at the end of every show, it's like go Lakers. It's it's really nice. It's <laughs> nice that you don't listen. <laughs> he has unlimited content of my voice and inflection that he can just throw into AI, and we yeah. can just use my voice whenever he wants. Every time I say something negative, it'll just say, "Go LA." Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'm sure your mom would love it. I'm, I'm sure you're, you know, I'm waiting for you to get a text from your. Why do you keep complimenting the Lakers? Like, what is going on? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that is Trista Crick. You can find her show, The Heat Check Podcast, everywhere you get your pods. Find her uh, nightly show on uh, the, the Bed MGM Tonight Show as well. I will occasionally make a, a an occasion on The Heat Check. Um, you know, she'll ask Anthony, you're okay. And I'll usually say no, because this season, that has normally been the answer. Um, and, and yeah, check out all of her stuff. Trista, thank you very much for hopping on. Uh, this is a bonus episode. This is going right up. And then tonight, I will be on All Access Lakers for the Lakers Bucks game and then live immediately after. Uh, and both of those shows will run in the morning as well. Thank you very much, Trista. Have a good one. Let's look at the line and see how much the Lakers are going to lose by. For the Milwaukee <laughs> that would Bucks, be so right? on brand. It would be, yeah, let's it'd be look so and perfect. See what the number <laughs> is right before we get off. Let's see the number. No, yeah. no uh, LeBron James tonight, right? No. The no. number is. Nine and a half. Oh, guys, even a Laker hater knows that's an opportunity to back the purple and gold. Nine and a half points. Oh, boy. Spencer Dinwiddie going to go and do his business, going to run some pick and rolls, going to run some ISOs because he no longer is coached by Jacques Vaughn. Darvin Ham's going to stand there <laughs> blinking. Anthony Davis versus Giannis. Oh, my goodness. What's Rui Hachimura going to do? All I know is that the Lakers are covering that 10 tonight. I just need to know what Shohei's translator has on the game, and then I'll, I'll follow him. Exactly. Until next time. <laughs> I'll talk to everybody soon. Well, 